the battle with Gog, the appearance of Elijah the prophet, and the return of Christ and resurrection of the faithful, covered in the last video, will be inaugurated, the great and terrible day of the Lord, in which the holocaust of God's pent up vengeance, will at last be poured out against his enemies on behalf of his people. The expiration of the sixth bowl of wrath, with the gathering of all the nations of the world, to Armageddon, triggers the pouring out of the seventh. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air. And there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings. And there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth so mighty an earthquake and so great. Paul depicts in 2 Thessalonians, the great event as follows. And to you who are troubled, rest with us, when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Moses, just before his death, in the song he taught Israel, spoke of the troubled history of the nation, and of this final crisis. To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand. And the things that shall come upon them, make haste. For the Lord shall judge his people, and repent himself for his servants, when he seeth that their power is gone, and there is none shut up or left. And he shall say, Where are their gods, their rock in whom they trusted, which did eat the fat of their sacrifices, and drank the wine of their drink offerings? Let them rise up and help you, and be your protection. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill, and I make alive. I wound, and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. If I whet my glittering sword, and mine hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to mine enemies, and will reward them that hate me. I will make mine arrows drunk with blood, and my sword shall devour flesh, and that with the blood of the slain and of the captives, from the beginning of revenges upon the enemy. In blessing the tribes, as recorded in the next chapter of Deuteronomy, Moses spoke enigmatically of God visiting his people, to finally accomplish his purpose with them. And he said, The Lord came from Sinai, and rose up from Seir unto them. He shined forth from Mount Paran, and he came with ten thousands of saints. From his right hand went a fiery law for them. A parallel passage in Habakkuk likewise shows that it is from the south, the Sinai Peninsula, that Christ with his angelic warriors launches his attack upon the armies of the world. O Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years make known, in wrath remember mercy. God came from Teman, and the Holy One from Mount Paran, Selah. His glory covered the heavens, and the earth was full of his praise. And his brightness was as the light. He had horns coming out of his hand, and there was the hiding of his power. Before him went the pestilence, and burning coals went forth at his feet. He stood and measured the earth. He beheld and drove asunder the nations, and the everlasting mountains were scattered. The perpetual hills did bow. His ways are everlasting. Habakkuk proceeds to record the violent upheavals of nature, attendant upon the advance of this angelic army, in words coinciding with those of Moses and other prophets. Concerning the purpose of the battle, he adds, Thou didst march through the land in indignation, thou didst thresh the heathen in anger. Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people, even for salvation with thine anointed. 
Thou woundest the head out of the house of the wicked, by discovering the foundation unto the neck, Selah. Having been given a vision of these yet future events, Habakkuk expresses their effect upon him. When I heard my belly trembled, my lips quivered at the voice, rottenness entered into my bones and I trembled in myself, that I might rest in the day of trouble. When he cometh up unto the people, he will invade them with his troops. The outpouring of divine power will clearly be of such a character as to strike terror into the hearts of mortals. Habakkuk's words also suggest that during the initial phase of the day of the Lord, the resurrected elect, of whom he will form a part, will not then have been given immortality, and will rest, during the judgments by the angelic host. The words of Paul in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 7, quoted previously, carry the same implication. En route to Jerusalem, Christ will engage in combat the forces in Elam, notwithstanding their opposition to the king of the north. This is apparent from a passage in Isaiah. Who is this that cometh from Edom, with dyed garments from Bozrah? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat? I have trodden the wine press alone. And of the people was none with me, for I will tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. For the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. And I looked, and there was none to help, and I wondered that there was none to uphold. Therefore mine own arm brought salvation unto me and my fury it upheld me. And I will tread down the people in mine anger, and make them drunk in my fury, and I will bring down their strength to the earth. The Anglo-American allies, and their affiliates, will not have involved themselves in the war with Gog, out of self-proclaimed noble motives of protection of the oppressed, and, in fact, as I have remarked, they will have found it expedient to sacrifice Israel for their own advantage. But the day of the Lord will bring vengeance, at last upon these nations who, indifferent to the history of the Jews, have acquiesced in, and contributed to their extreme sufferings in the 20th century. The judgments of God, as portrayed in chapter 2 of Isaiah, are shown to be upon all nations that are proud and haughty, including the ships of Tarshish, being the Anglo-American fleets, which are specifically listed for destruction. Enter into the rock and hide thee in the dust for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty. The lofty looks of man shall be humbled, and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon every one that is proud and lofty, and upon every one that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low. And upon all the cedars of Lebanon that are high and lifted up, and upon all the oaks of Bashan, and upon all the high mountains, and upon all the hills that are lifted up, and upon every high tower, and upon every fenced wall, and upon all the ships of Tarshish, and upon all pleasant pictures. And the loftiness of man shall be bowed down, and the haughtiness of man shall be made low, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day and the idols he shall utterly abolish. And they shall go into the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. As mentioned in the last video, Jerusalem will be the focus of Gog's anti-Semitic intentions. Thus it will be also the scene of the greatest destruction upon the king of the north's return to destroy the remainder of the devastated Jewish nation, the remnant in the land including those in Jerusalem, will call upon their God, to spare them from their enemies, and from the violent judgments of the divine army. Joel predicts. And it shall come to pass, that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call.
the advance to Jerusalem by the Divine Army, is graphically described in Joel. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people and a strong, there hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness, yea, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains, shall they leap like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble, as a strong people set in battle array. Before their face the people shall be much pained, all faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men, they shall climb the wall like men of war, and they shall march every one on his ways, and they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one thrust another, they shall walk every one in his path, and when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. They shall run to and fro in the city, they shall run upon the wall, they shall climb up upon the houses, they shall enter in at the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them, the heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withhold their shining. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? The besieged and terrorized Jewish remnant in Jerusalem, having been prepared by the work of Elijah, will welcome the mighty one advancing from the south. Blessed is he, that cometh in the name of the Lord, will be their eager cry, as predicted by Jesus. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth, till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. The divine response will be full of tenderness and compassion. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers, and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment, until the indignation be overpassed. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood, and shall no more cover her slain. The faithful remnant in Zion will be covered over and protected from the furnace of destruction to be poured out upon the besieging northern armies. For thus hath the Lord spoken unto me, like as the lion and the young lion roaring on his prey, when a multitude of shepherds is called forth against him, he will not be afraid of their voice nor abase himself for the noise of them. So shall the Lord of hosts come down to fight for Mount Zion and for the hill thereof. As birds flying, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. Defending also he will deliver it, and passing over he will preserve it. The violent upheaval unleashed around Jerusalem, in the moment of great indignation, will surpass anything the world has ever experienced. The vault of the sky, above the heaving earth, will take on an awesome aspect. The natural orbs of the sun and moon, together with the stars, will be dark end, creating an effect like neither day nor night. Zechariah provides some of the details. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations, as when he fought in the day of battle. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives which is before Jerusalem on the east, 
and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west, and there shall be a very great valley, and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north, and half of it toward the south. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azel. Yea, ye shall flee, like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah king of Judah. And the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with thee. And it shall come to pass in that day, that the light shall not be clear nor dark, but it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord, not day nor night, but it shall come to pass, that at evening time it shall be light. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. And it shall come to pass in that day, that a great tumult from the Lord shall be among them. And they shall lay hold every one on the hand of his neighbor, and his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor. And so shall be the plague of the horse, of the mule, of the camel, and of the ass, and of all the beasts that shall be in these tents, as this plague. Ezekiel's description of the destruction of the Gogian multitudes shows how they will be overtaken by a gigantic earthquake, and how, maddened by fear, the troops will engage in an orgy of mutual slaughter. A cataclysmic downpour of rain, hailstones, fire and brimstone will overwhelm the terrified enemies of God's people in a flood of divine fury. And it shall come to pass at the same time, when Gog shall come against the land of Israel, saith the Lord God, that my fury shall come up in my face. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath have I spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel, so that the fishes of the sea and the fowls of the heaven and the beasts of the field and all creeping things that creep upon the earth and all the men that are upon the face of the earth shall shake at my presence, and the mountains shall be thrown down, and the steep places shall fall, and every wall shall fall to the ground. And I will call for a sword against him throughout all my mountains, saith the Lord God. Every man's sword shall be against his brother, and I will plead against him with pestilence and with blood and I will rain upon him, and upon his bands, and upon the many people that are with him, an overflowing rain, and great hailstones, fire and brimstone. Thus will I magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations, and they shall know that I am the Lord. This greatest earthquake of all time will occur as the feet of Christ, God's representative, descend onto the Mount of Olives from which he ascended around 2000 years before. The whole topography of Jerusalem and the surrounding countryside will be drastically changed. Olivet will be rent into a long and east-west line, and the segments moved, one to the north and the other to the south, to form a large valley running from Jerusalem down to the Jordan. Jerusalem will be elevated, and the land on the north and south leveled, so that she will be exalted above the hills, and no longer concealed. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Lord, and his name one. All the land shall be turned as a plain from Geba to Rimmon, south of Jerusalem, and it shall be lifted up, and inhabited in her place, from Benjamin's gate unto the place of the first gate, unto the corner gate, and from the tower of Hananiel unto the king's winepresses. And men shall dwell in it, and there shall be no more utter destruction, but Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. And it shall come to pass in the last days, that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains, and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. Underground waters will gush forth from Jerusalem and flow east and west. 
And it shall be in that day that living waters shall go out from Jerusalem, half of them toward the former sea, and half of them toward the hinder sea. In summer and in winter shall it be. The effects of these convulsions will extend throughout the whole earth, causing the collapsing of buildings, the breaking of dams and the surging of tidal waves. I say our records. And it shall come to pass, that he who fleeth from the noise of the fear shall fall into a pit. He that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare. For the windows from on high are open, and the foundations of the earth do shake. The earth is utterly broken down, the earth is clean dissolved, the earth is moved exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard, and shall be removed like a cottage and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it, and it shall fall and not rise again. After the initial pouring out of divine indignation, the leaders of the Jewish remnant will organize themselves to rout their enemies with the support of the servants of God, who have been resurrected. Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of saints. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and harp. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth, and a two-edged sword in their hand, to execute vengeance upon the heathen, and punishments upon the people, to bind their kings with chains, and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. Zechariah chapter 12 shows they will realize that their strength lies in God, whose power will be invoked by the faithful attitude of the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And the governors of Judah shall say in their heart, The inhabitants of Jerusalem shall be my strength in the Lord of hosts their God. Zechariah goes on to describe their victories. In that day will I make the governors of Judah like an hearth of fire among the wood, and they a torch of fire in a sheaf, and they shall devour all the people round about, on the right hand and on the left. And Jerusalem shall be inhabited again in her own place, even in Jerusalem. It will no longer be Jewish military brilliance, but childlike faith that will, still the enemy and the avenger, as the psalmist says. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. As in the days of Jehoshaphat the enemy will, in his terror and panic, continue to turn his weapons against himself. And I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms, and I will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the heathen, and I will overthrow the chariots and those that ride in them. And the horses and their riders shall come down every one by the sword of his brother. The Jews in the land outside of Jerusalem, stated as the tents of Judah, will, according to Zechariah, be saved first. And the Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first, that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. After which the remaining enemy troops, in a near the now elevated city, will be destroyed. The threshing by the daughter of Zion will then be at a stay. The forepart of the Gogian multinational dragon shall have been driven toward the Dead Sea to the east, and the hinder part toward the Mediterranean to the west. But I will remove far off from you the northern army, and will drive him into a land barren and desolate, with his face toward the east sea, and his hinder part toward the utmost sea, and his stink shall come up, and his ill savor shall come up, because he hath done great things. The land will be full of the bodies of the slain, together with the wreckage of their weaponry, and its condition like a desolate wilderness. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, 
and behind them a desolate wilderness, yea, and nothing shall escape them. But before the cleansing of the land, a healing message of good tidings will be sent to the third part of Israel, who will have been brought through the fire, refined as silver, and tried as gold, and who will have called on God's name. And I will bring the third part through the fire, and will refine them as silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say, It is my people, and they shall say, The Lord is my God. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God, that hath dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. I say I records the invitation to the Jews, to behold the one who has saved them. O Zion, that bringest good tidings, get thee up into the high mountain. O Jerusalem, that bringest good tidings, lift up thy voice with strength. Lift it up, be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God. There will then occur the most moving reconciliation of all history, as the Jews in Jerusalem meet the Messiah, God's representative, who has saved them, Jesus of Nazareth, their brother whom they, with the Romans, crucified two thousand years before, and who is their king, the king of the Jews, and destined to be lord of the world. At the same time they will acknowledge Jesus' brethren, Jews and Gentiles who, down the ages, have suffered for the sake of the truth, and who have been involved in their deliverance from Gog. As the impact of these staggering facts, with their bearing on Israel's historical experiences, begins to be felt, the nation will be filled with mourning and self-reproach. The tremendous effect of this reconciliation is illustrated by the emphasis given to it by Zachariah's detailed description. And I will pour upon the house of David, and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace and of supplications. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him, as one mourneth for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him, as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. In that day shall there be a great mourning in Jerusalem, as the mourning of Hadad Remen in the valley of Megiddon. And the land shall mourn every family apart, the family of the house of David apart, and their wives apart, the family of the house of Nathan apart, and their wives apart, the family of the house of Levi apart, and their wives apart, the family of Shimei apart, and their wives apart, all the families that remain every family apart, and their wives apart. For the servants of God, Christ's brethren, the reception of the Jews back into divine favor will mean life from the dead. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, the change to incorruptibility and immortality will be bestowed upon those faithful who had been raised from the dead or who were alive at Christ's coming. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, 
and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? This anointing with spirit power will occur on the mountain of Zion, in accordance with the words of the psalmist. As the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descendeth upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life for evermore. The unjust, on the other hand, who have been judged unworthy of eternal life, will be left to perish by a second death, as stated in Matthew. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. That is in the fiery judgments, which will engulf the adherents of sin, politically and ecclesiastically manifested in the nations at the time. The reconciliation of Israel with its Messiah, and his physically resurrected brethren, including the fathers of the nation, completes the national resurrection, from the valley of dry bones, as spoken about in Ezekiel chapter 37, of that portion of the nation then in the land. Living by faith the justified remnant, supervised by Christ and his brethren, will constitute the nucleus of the kingdom of God, which is destined to crush and supplant all existing dominions. This remnant that has turned in faith to God, having endured both the trial of the Gogian Holocaust and the furnace of Armageddon, will be regarded with a special favor by the God of Israel, as Isaiah said. In that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that are escaped of Israel. And it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion and he that remaineth in Jerusalem shall be called holy, even every one that is written among the living in Jerusalem. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. Miraculous powers, similar to those poured out upon the first century believers, will be bestowed upon them. And it shall come to pass afterward, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my Spirit. They will experience great tenderness from the Messiah, their Savior, as I say I said again. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm, and carry them in his bosom, and shall gently lead those that are with young. The land will have to be cleansed from the defilement of war. Ezekiel in his 39th chapter, describes the burial of the bodies of Gog's hordes, in a valley east of the Dead Sea. And they that dwell in the cities of Israel shall go forth, and shall set on fire and burn the weapons, both the shields and the bucklers, the bows and the arrows and the hand staves and the spears, and they shall burn them with fire for seven years. So that they shall take no wood out of the field, neither cut down any tree of the forests, for they shall burn the weapons with fire, and they shall spoil those that spoil them, and rob those that rob them, saith the Lord God. And it shall come to pass in that day, that I will give unto Gog a place there of graves in Israel, the valley of the passengers on the east of the sea, and it shall stop the noses of the passengers, and there shall they bury Gog with all his multitude, and they shall call it the valley of Haman Gog. And seven months shall the house of Israel be burying of them, that they may cleanse the land. Yea, all the people of the land shall bury them, and it shall be to them a renown, the day that I shall be glorified, saith the Lord God. And they shall sever out men of continual employment, passing through the land, to bury with the passengers those that remain upon the face of the earth, to cleanse it. After the end of seven months shall they search, and the passengers that pass through the land, 
when any seeth a man's bone, then shall he set up a sign by it, till the barriers have buried it in the valley of Haman Gog. And also the name of the city shall be Hamona. Thus shall they cleanse the land. Thus will be completed the controversy between Rome and the Jews in the Holy Land. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to get notifications of new videos. Like, share and comment below.